Well, today I'm going to talk about why Rewire sucks. Now, you're asking, Well, I like Rewire because Rewire makes me work reason with logic. Blah, 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 blah. So we're back at the computer here and kind of get get a little bit further explanation of my MIDI. I, I just kind of want to just drive this home a little bit because this is really important. Is you can see here's my Technics computer and I have one MIDI out going to the audio box. It's you'll say MIDI out on the keyboard and then and then it'll say MIDI in on the audio box. You know, out to in. And then on the audio box, you'll see a, an out port, and on the out port. I'll basically say like, you know, on my um, PC or Reason computer, I'll have an interface in there. You don't have to worry about it because it just connects. You don't have to do this crap in, in PC. Just pretend like this is an actual physical cable. And I'm going, I'm physically connecting the audio box from the, from the out port into my, my Roland PC, the in port. Taking the signal that's coming out and then sending it back over to my, my Reason computer. So... That being said, that's what's going on. All right, and that's all you really have to do. You, you just use one MIDI interface and it works great. And and the cool thing about MIDI is you could split up to 16 channels and I'll show you how I did that. I don't think you really have to use this, but I find it's very helpful to do, to kind of like have virtual MIDI routing because sometimes I could separate the MIDI and you know this is optional but i, I want to explain anyway so what i'm doing here is i'm doing this thing where i have my my audio box that's coming in and i also have a analog factory and what i'm doing is you know this technics it doesn't have a standard sustain pedal it has like some weird connection and i don't have a sustain pedal so what i did is i took the sustain pedal and i hooked it into my analog factory however when i did that it basically caused the polarity to change and I don't have a polarity switch and and so what I did is, is I did it software and and so I just basically you know hey you know took these two guys in and, and you know signal from my audio box going into the analog and control select reverse polarity and then go back out to you know the factory and then the USB it basically just switches my polarity software in here. So I thought I thought it was really cool. It's something neat to share on here. So you know if you like it, you know, give me a big thumbs up, you know, and I'll do more of these little tidbits of stuff. And and the other cool thing is you could do like this thing called uh, virtual virtual MIDI and stuff like that, and you can create your own MIDI ports and connect to other things. So I, I like that. So I'll do more on this part. Uh, you know, just minimize it. So let's go ahead and just close this out. Now the other thing you'll need, you know, need Logic, of course. Now the other thing I notice is, let's go in here and, and Logic, and then go Audio Preferences, and then go and just make sure your your rewire behavior. I, I find that you get a big, you'll take a big um, processor hit if you have this on, and and if you're not really using it. So just kind of make sure that's that's not on. And what I'll do is I'll also I'll make sure my, you know, this is checked, you know, that it's not automatic, that you know. And I'll increase the buffer size a little bit, you know, and then I'll also do, um, I'll change it to, you know, regular precision. Uh, all these things are, will help with your processor, you know, because I have an old computer, you know, and I just, I can't, you know, I can't run things like I, I used to. Uh, Logic is just a, it's a beast, man. Uh, especially with the, the 10.3 version is actually a little bit better. I mean, but I heard, I heard the uh, 10.4 was horrible. Is in the new one, you know, processor. For this uh, trick to work, you also have to go into, so you, you just go general, you go audio preferences, then general, and this little general tab. I like to uncheck the input monitoring. I find that record enable tracks, it kind of messes things up. Because what it does is when a track is focused, it only monitors that one channel. And I can't monitor all three channels at the same time. So that's why I keep that unchecked. So FYI. Go back in here and you know kind of how you enable some of this stuff i don't know if you know this you go over here to advance make sure this is checked and 
and I, I have the audio, the MIDI, and the advanced editing, all three checked. Now, here's, here's another tidbit that I found with Logic, is if you have all of these checked, you take a processor hit, uh, especially the score and the control surfaces. This, the control surfaces, I don't know what it is about these two and the surround. They're just really, just by leaving them on, seriously, just by leaving them on, my processor will go, you know, but, but actually disable them, I, I actually get a really good, you know, decrease in my processor utilization. So this, this whole purpose of this video is how to distribute the load, not a poo load, a CPU load. <laughs> That was bad. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Processing. It works, man. So that is why I, I'm doing all this, because you could actually still use an old-ass Mac Pro to do some decent work. Now, this is a remote desktop program that I'm using. You can download for free. You just search, you know, Microsoft Remote Desktop. or you, I think you can even get it through the App Store uh, on your Mac. And it's it's free. And basically, all it is is just go New. And, and you just type in the IP address. See if we go in here and go Edit. Yeah, whatever. Um, and so you just type in the PC and you can put your username, you know, whatever, a job low or whatever, and your password. And, and what I like to do is I like to basically make sure my resolution's high and my colors, whatever, you know, and and I, I say start in full screen. So what this will do, I uncheck, oh, ah, I uncheck um, use all monitors uh, because I, I don't want to do that. So when I do that, Make sure it's on the screen that you want it to go full screen in. Because if you have it in a different monitor, wherever this is, like if I have this in another monitor, oh, dang it, what's it doing? Um, it'll go full screen that one. So I just double click on it and go boom, 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 boom. There it is. So, and there's my reason. So let's go ahead and. Yeah, all right. Go ahead and, and open this up. And there's my reason. And then I can go over and just do my control. Um, was that control left or whatever? And go to my other screen and boom, I'm there. So then, then I'm going to put this over on my other monitor. I don't need to do that anymore. And I can minimize it, whatever. And then put this guy in its own monitor. So we could do like right there. So now, you know, we have everything connected wise. And we have you know, our, our reason over here, and then we have, you know, our logic here. Now you're asking, well, all right, well, what's what's the big trick here? What, you know, how do you get this going? All right, so it's really easy. Uh, the one thing I like that I did not like about Rewire is it, A, it disables the use of VSTs in, in reason. Now you're asking, well, what's the big deal? You can use your VSTs and and uh, logic. Well, well, it is a really big deal because the thing is, is I find that certain VSTs work better in like Reason or versus another DAW like Logic. I, yeah, I mean, when you're doing this for a while, you, you find all these tricks here. You find that, hey, there's certain VSTs that work better. And now here's the other cool thing about the why I'm using Reason on a PC, because I can use PC VSTs. Hey, cool. Yeah, and and that is awesome right there. So I can bring in whatever VST I want. Now, the setup. The first thing I want to do is I want to make sure that I have, you know, three audio channels. So what I do is I just basically, I just go, you know, you know go to audio and I just, you know, just leave whatever you want. You could just type in, you know, three down here because I have three stereo outputs on my on my Roland, which is connected to my PC, okay, you got that? And and I just type in three and I hit create, all right? Boom, done. And it'll, it'll, it'll create all those. And here are my three audio channels. You can see that, you know, I have input one and two. Now, remember I said I had like nine and 10, 11, 12, 13, you know how logic messes it up? Well, this one and two. So what I, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll just have something playing in a loop and I'll just basically go through each one until I find one. Now, now keep in mind, this little eye right here, if, it, if it's not there, you kind of just basically you go in here and, you know, one of these is, I think it's volume or something. One of these is checked. I can't remember which one it was. It's track header, right click on it. And you click the eye and that is your monitoring input. 
I for input, okay? And and so what the I does is it basically it, it enables me to hear the sound, monitor the sound, but not record it. And the other thing that I didn't like about when he did Reason Rewire is in Logic, you have to create these stupid box channels. Like it wouldn't work in a regular audio channel. You had to create aux channels. And I hated that. I'm like, you know, I had to create an aux channel right here and then, and then basically, you know, hit the um, read button so that way it would populate up here. It was so weird, you know? It's just like, come on, man. You know, just make, why do you have to add so many steps? But this way I like this, I just make one audio channel and it works, okay? And this is my audio input for, you know, channel one and two, and this one's three and four, you know, five and six. And it just so happened it worked out that way. Okay, so now, the MIDI. Now the MIDI, you know, what you have to do for the MIDI is you basically, you just go up here again, you just go external MIDI, and and on that IEC driver, it, it populates or, you know, basically it'll show up if you have it in your, your MIDI, what was that thing called? Hold on. This audio box right here, because this is right here in my MIDI studio, I can go then go into here and do external MIDI and I'll create three of them. Ah. Three and I'll create ba -ba -ba boom three audio tracks and it'll do ascending and it'll start off in MIDI one, two, and three. Cool. Now, now hold on here. Just wait, okay? Just wait. There's more information here that's coming that's super important because if you bail out right now, it's it's everything is just gonna go to crap and you're gonna be asking me all these stupid questions. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna be like, nah, 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 nah. I don't care. All right? Three tracks, it'll come up and here they are. You go, um, it's basically, it'll look like this. Now, you'll notice I have MIDI channel two, MIDI channel three, and I have MIDI channel four. And you're just like, well, where's one? Ah, you're smart. Yes. The reason why we're not using one is because the piano that I split, remember I told you I made that split from the audio box. Let's pull that thing up again. This audio box and this keyboard is on channel one. So what that means is it's always triggering one no matter what channel is selected here. So that is why I do not pick one. But we get around it. So we got 15 channels to use and I'm only using three because I have three audio. All right, hope so far, I hope this is making some sense. Over here on preferences, we're going back to preference because I forgot one more thing to show you, is on the MIDI tab, sync, go into MIDI sync project settings. Make sure that the destination is checked and I, I selected the audio box USB. And what it does is it sends my song stop and play and all that. And I also check this MIDI time code thing. I don't really think it's really that important, but I think it helps with the syncing. So I, I can't remember if it was. You don't have to have the machine control. You don't really need that. And that's all you have to do is just make sure these two are checked and, and whatever interface that you're using is checked. Um, I do not like to have all because it kind of sends too much stuff and you get issues. All right, so close out of that, close out of that. So this is set up, all right? We got our logic set up, got our channels, got our, e you know, whatever that we're doing, our MIDI and our audio. And then you can see how I like to have the audio channel on top. I'll name it audio, whatever. See, I have my, my grand, my my MIDI first, audio, and then I'll have my MIDI, audio, MIDI, audio. I have it like that. So we can, I could actually group all these if I wanted to. I'm gonna put them in a summing track or something, but okay, whatever. All right, back over to Reason. Uh, where is it? Edit, preferences. <laughs> 